So we continue in our exploration of what hope looks like in these days. And in the midst of this exploration, I want to ask this morning, how does our hope call us to act for and with God? How does our hope let allow God to work in our lives in a bold way? God calls us out of our comfortable places, our mild places to consider what it would mean as a people of faith, as the church of Jesus Christ, to act and to be bold for Christ. And to live boldly into the future. Not mild, not mundane, but bold. As bold as you can be. Indeed, when it comes to being bold in our speech and our, in our actions, we all have our ups and downs. I know I do. We pull our punches, we laugh a little bit at a racist or a sexist joke, or just chuckle a little, or we speak up and try to offer a constructive critique of someone who's caused a microaggression against another. Or we speak up boldly and say, no way, you can't do that, that's wrong. But so often we chuckle, we roll our eyes, but remain silent. Then we check ourselves along the way, and next time I'll do better than that. Next time I'll, I'll, I'll do that strong and bold thing that I know I'm being called to do. Next time. John Pavlovitz, Pavlovitz I've quoted once since already since I've been here, for, uh, an activist from, and former evangelical pastor from North Carolina says that as people of faith, we get up when we fall because we are a people of hope. We accept the descent, descent as the invitation to rise again. The spiritual journey like the human experience is not a level, linear path where pitfalls and uniform, uh, where pitfalls are uniform and where growth is predictable and the progress is comfortable. It is a messy, meandering, awkward path of stops and starts. It is made of both the falling and the getting back up. And the former is more often far easier than the latter. Now, it's safe to say, I think, that bold doesn't get any bolder than Jesus. Think about that. Carry that with you this week. In fact, there is probably nothing more radical than the teachings and the living witness of Jesus Christ. It's odd to me that while Jesus calls us to do the strong and bold and radical thing even, the church can be the most timid and mild place we know. You know what I'm talking about. In our continuing text this morning that Pastor Guy read, Paul Nixon, from his little book, I Refuse to Lead a Dying Church, says, ultimately the boldness of the Christian faith is contained in the message itself. The Gospels are filled with radical teachings that mild-mannered pastors are always trying to sugarcoat or downplay in order not to offend middle America. You know anybody like that? Not you. Hopefully not me. But I have colleagues like that, unfortunately. Nixon is saying to us to let Jesus say what he says and let the chips fall where they may. To choose what Jesus would do, that is the one bold choice before us. And that's what hope looks like in doing the bold thing. 
Now, in our text from Matthew this morning, from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus offers two images, or we might call them metaphors, or in real life, there are substantial real things that enable our bold action. What are they? Salt and light. Bland food becomes tasty when salt is added. I don't really have time to say this, but I'll tell the story. When my mom was about 86 or 87, she was in a nursing home, and I was in South Carolina visiting her, and the doctor came in and wanted to make sure that she didn't have salt in her diet. And I wasn't a mild-mannered son. In response, I can't repeat everything I said to this doctor, but why in the world? She's 86 years old. She wants to be happy. She wants to live happy to the end. Why can't she have some salt? Well, he looked at me and rolled his eyes, and I think that's when he left the room. Salt and light. Light calls us to do the bold thing for Christ. Light reveals uh, the, the, the things that we need to challenge. You know, for instance, it's easy to go through the motions of worship. Whether you're here in these pews or at home or in your jammies on your TV this morning, ignoring faith's deeper claims on us kind of easy. In reflecting on the text from Isaiah 58, the scholar Shai Held, H-E-L-D, says that at times we say to God, we'll give you worship, uh, and you, God, just otherwise mind your own business. God, you, your place is in the church, in the synagogue, in the mosque, but stay out of our workplaces and our streets and our voting stations. But you know what, says hell, God isn't having any of it. <laughs> if you want to worship me, God says, you're going to have to learn to care about those I care about, what I care about. You see, my friends, ritual, the ritual we practice in worship and justice go together, one reinforcing the other. Together doing the bold thing for God, even in worship. That is the good news that the prophet Isaiah uh, brings us this morning. Jesus offers us nourishment in the meal set before us on this altar today. It is indeed a bold thing for us to get up out of our pews if you are able to come up from your pews to eat the bread and drink the cup offered as the best meal you'll ever have. The best meal at home where you take bread and the cup in your own precious spiritual place all together with us. And after receiving this meal, Jesus, as salt and light, leads us out into the world to do justice in Christ's name, to be the salt and light for a hurting world. Jesus came to fulfill, he says, he came to fulfill the commandments to love God and to love neighbor. Our hope calls us to the ritual of the bread and the cup, deeply embraced and received to be the nourishment for the hungry, to loose the bonds of injustice, to let the oppressed go free, to bring the homeless into your house. The question is, will we offer them the meal we share at this altar this day? What will it be? Remain cautious and stay in your comfort zone? Or equip yourselves to swim off to Cuba? If you need any help going there, I know somebody who'll lead you. Boldly and courageously, try to hold on to all the good ways of the church of the past or act in ways that move us toward a new future. My friends, it is a choice 
you have before you this day. Amen.